They want to call you a dictator. You use the words, I am your retribution. And now before that, you said if you've been wronged and you used other words as well. But I want to be very, very clear on this. To be clear, do you in any way have any plans whatsoever, if reelected president, to abuse power, to break the law, to use the government to go after people? You mean like they're using right now. So in the history of our country, what's happened to us, again, has never happened before. Over nonsense, over nothing, made up charges. I often say Al Capone, he was one of the greatest of all time, if you like criminals. He was a mob boss, the likes of which Scarface, they call him. And he got indicted once. I got indicted four times. I want to go back to this one issue, though, because the media has been focused on this and attacking you yeah. under no circumstances. You are promising America tonight. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Yeah. Except Look, for? He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I want to close the border and I want to drill. That's drill, not a that's, drill. That's not, oh, no. that's not retribution. I got I'm going to be. I'm going to be, you know, he keeps. <laughs> we love this guy. He says, You're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, No, 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 other than day one. We're closing the border. And we're drilling, drilling, drilling. After that, I'm not a dictator. So that, okay? that, that sounds to me like you're going back to the policies <laughs> when you were president. That's All right, exactly take a break. Right. Just getting started. Well, you heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Trump only wants to be a dictator on his first day in office, which to me is incredibly reassuring because after learning about Project 2025 and his plan to dismantle the administrative state where he then unilaterally used the FBI to go after political opponents he referred to as vermin, not to mention his attempt to illegally stay in power after losing the last election, you know, I was really beginning to worry. But he's only vowing to abuse power on day one. What a relief. Now, to be clear, yes, he had a facetious tone, but I'm sorry, you don't get to dismiss this as a joke after he's put in place concrete steps to dismantle democracy and abuse power. And prior to this town hall with Hannity, Cash Patel, a former administration official, made another admission about his dictatorial intent on Steve Bannon's podcast. And as you're going to see, this was no joke. Highly confident that when you go back and in, in, is uh, a senior member of this uh uh, administration, President Trump's administration, starting in the afternoon of the 20th of January of 2025. Uh, do you feel conf confident that you will be able to deliver the goods, that we can have serious prosecutions and accountability? And I want the Morning Joe producers that watch us and all the producers that watch us, this is just not rhetoric. We're absolutely dead serious. We're not, you, you cannot have a constitutional republic and allow what these uh, deep staters have done to the country. The deep state, the administrative state, the fourth branch of government never mentioned in the Constitution is going to be taken apart brick by brick. And the people that did these evil deeds will be held accountable and prosecuted, criminal prosecutions. Uh, Cash, I, I know you're probably going to be head of the CIA, but do you believe that you can deliver the goods on this in a pretty short, in a pretty short order of the first couple of months so we can get rolling on prosecutions? Yes, we got the bench for it, Bannon, and you know those guys. I'm not going to go out there and say their names right now so the radical left-wing media can terrorize them. But, <clears throat> excuse me, the one thing we learned in the Trump administration the first go-round is we got to put in all-America patriots top to bottom. And we got them for law enforcement. We got them for intel collection. We got them for offensive operations. We got them for DOD, CIA, everywhere. And the one thing we will do that they never will do is we will follow the facts and the law and go to courts of law and correct these justices and lawyers who have been prosecuting these cases based on politics and actually issuing them as lawfare. We will go out and find the conspirators, not just in government, but in the media. Yes, we're going to come after the people in the media who lied about American citizens, who helped Joe Biden rig presidential elections. We're going to come after you, whether it's criminally or civilly, we'll figure that out. But yeah, we're putting you all on notice. And Steve, this is why they hate us. This is why we're tyrannical. This is why we're dictators. Well, at least he's self-aware, I guess. Now, aside from the fact that he stated clearly that we're going to come after people in the media, he also gave a nod to the Project 2025 goal of replacing all bureaucrats with Trump loyalists so he can wield absolute power absolutely, which confirms people close to Trump 
are full steam ahead with this tyrannical project. It's not just the Heritage Foundation and other right-wing organizations doing this alone. They now have Trump's approval. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Project 2025, well, as Dame explains, it's a blueprint which assumes that the next president will be able to rule by fiat under the unitary executive theory, which posits that the president has the power to control the entire federal executive branch. It is also based on the premise that the next president will implement Schedule F, which allows the president to fire any federal employee who has policymaking authority and replace them with a presidential appointee who is not voted on in the Senate. Now, he theoretically could make all of these sweeping changes in a single day. So when he says, I only want to be a dictator for one day, he that's really all he needs to institute most of his plan. And once he's done this, once he's given himself the authority to make sweeping policy changes with no checks and balances, well, here's what he wants to actually do. Here's what Project 2025's mandate for leadership says that they are planning when it comes to policies. Quote, the social conservative wish list calls for ending abortion, diversity and inclusion efforts, protections for LGBTQ people, and most importantly, banning any and all LGBTQ content. In fact, the mandate for leadership makes eradicating LGBTQ people from public life its top priority. Its number one promise is to restore the family as the centerpiece of American life and protect our children. They are explicit in how they plan to do so, as you'll see in the paragraph below. They plan to proceed by declaring any and all LGBTQ content to be pornographic in nature. And that paragraph reads, Pornography manifested today in the omnipresent propagation of transgender ideology and sexualization of children, for instance, is not a political Gordian knot inextricably binding up disparate claims about free speech, property rights, sexual liberation, and child welfare. It has no claim to First Amendment protection. Its purveyors are child predators and misogynistic exploiters of women. Their product is as addictive as any illicit drug and as psychologically destructive as any crime. Pornography Pornography should be outlawed. The people who produce and distribute it should be imprisoned. Educators and public librarians who purvey it should be classed as registered sex offenders. And telecommunications and technology firms that facilitate its spread should be shuttered. So if porn should be outlawed and any and all LGBTQ plus content is designated as porn and they want to imprison anyone who disseminates said porn, you can see how this leads to a situation where all gay propaganda is banned and free speech is restricted to the point where the movement's existence is criminalized, as was the case in Russia, where gay propaganda was banned and the LGBTQ movement itself was subsequently banned. And none of this is hyperbole. They say, quote, trans ideology has no claim to First Amendment protection. They're saying we can do what we want, even if it violates the Constitution. That's what Project 2025 entails. But this is just one issue. We're just talking about LGBTQ plus rights. I mean, you, we've barely scratched the surface on other issues. Trump has already broadcasted his intent to abuse power. He's planning, for example, a radical crackdown on immigration that includes increased raids, mass deportations, and even ideological screenings. So when someone expresses clear intent to be a dictator and literally admits that they plan to abuse power, I think that we should believe them. And guess what? If the election were held today, this person who's saying, I want to be a dictator, I'm going to abuse power, would win. Aggregate polling data shows that Trump is 2.1 points ahead of Biden overall in hypothetical matchups, and he also has a lead in pivotal swing states too. Now, Trump is very much aware that he is stoking fear in normal Americans who don't want to live in a Trump dictatorship, and his strategy to, I guess, assuage their fears has been to basically point at Joe Biden and say he's the one who actually is a threat to democracy, and he's done this over and over and over again. And it's obviously not working. Now, to make matters worse, Trump supporters, it's not like they're saying, hey, look, I support you, but this is a little bit too far. No, many of them are celebrating the fact that he wants to be a dictator. They think it's based, literally. Grace Chong, the CFO of Bannon's podcast, tweeted, I'm down for a Trump dictatorship. And if you look at the replies, a lot of conservatives agreed, and others tweeted that it was their favorite part of the town hall. Now, that's not the totality of responses. Some conservatives expressed skepticism that he'd follow through on his threat to be a dictator, since he did say he'd lock up Hillary Clinton, but he never did. So I, I don't know if that means that they want him to, but just don't believe that he will. Uh, others thought mm, this is a bit of a bad strategy, not 
necessarily saying, hey, it's just bad because I support democracy. I mean, the ambivalence that we're seeing and downright support for this among his base should be alarming to everyone. The fact that so many Americans now are openly saying, I support the idea of a dictatorship should scare people. Now, the question is, how are the rest of conservative media responding to this? Because it's one thing for just Trump supporters to act like dipshits because that's what we expect. But what are the media people saying? Well, Steve Bannon, for one, is pissed that Hannity dared to ask the question in the first place. Murdoch's a moron. Murdoch, Murdoch so missed what happened in 15, 16. He was ordering nails to do this stuff. He came to the White House. He's not a bright guy. He's not a bright guy. He's kind of a nepo because his, his, his father, had they had money. The sons are the biggest mores in the world. Untethered with, with ales gone, this is truly Steve, a TV for stupid people. Sean Hannity actually thought he was helping Trump last night. Let me ask you a question. Will you be a dictator? Trump gives a full heckle. And here's what I love. The audience gets it. They're laughing. By the way, Sean, they're laughing at you. They're laughing at the stupid, ridiculous question. Of course, Trump's not a dictator. It's absurd on the face of even to consider, even to ask that question that Morning Joe and those guys can cut the clips on shows you're an idiot. And we don't have time for idiots, bro. This is a this is a war. OK, this is a war. We don't have time for a sunshine patriots in this nonsense. And don't carry the water for the Murdochs and don't carry the water for the left. And if you don't say, well, I'm the biggest little Trump thing, you're carrying the water. Whoever, it is disgusting that you ask that question. Let me be blunt. It's disgusting you ask that question. But then when Trump heckles you, that's a heckle, bro. And when the audience has a belly laugh and they're laughing at you, you come back and ask it again. How dumb are you? It's absurd. You're carrying the water for our enemies. Don't you get that? And don't you get it when, when the guy heckles you and, and the audience laughs in your face? Maybe that's the time to write down that number two pencil. Maybe I shouldn't go again and ask it again. He gave you a freaking answer. And the audience backed him up in the answer. Full stop, that's all you need. Move on to the next thing. Obscene. An obscenity. Listen, you can express dictatorial intent to come after people in the media, but don't you dare use the word dictator in the process because then, mm, let's be honest, you're being a little bit too conspicuous. That's what I took away from that. It's amazing, right? Hannity asked the question because it is a sticking point for a lot of people, and it is why Trump isn't doing as well as he could be doing. Currently, he's beating Biden, but the fear that he wants to be a dictator, which is legitimate, by the way, is going to drive a lot more support to Biden because they don't want to live in a fucking dictatorship. Can't say I blame them. I agree with that. So they're scared. And Trump, he could get away with, you know, I'm just being facetious, he. I only want to be a dictator for one day. If he wasn't actually putting together a fucking plan to seize control of the government. Now, furthermore, Trump could go out of his way to reassure Americans that he will respect the rule of law. He could denounce what Cash Patel said and claim that he's never going to abuse power. We might not believe him, but at least we see that he's trying to mitigate the fears that Americans rightfully have about him. But he's not doing that because he knows and we all know that he does want to abuse power and he's not going to respect the rule of law. But on the subject of Fox News, since Steve Bannon mentioned it, here's how they're handling it. Because uh, I, I view this as coping and seething because if Trump really did go after the media, odds are they would be part of that. But nonetheless, let's hear what they have to say. The New York Times has a headline, Trump deflects question on retribution and law breaking at town hall. CNN, Trump sidesteps question when asked if he plans to abuse powers if reelected. And Rolling Stone's headline, Trump to Hannity on whether he'll abuse power as president. And they included a shrug emoji. Also, uh, the Biden campaign posted on social media that Trump said that he'd be a dictator on day one. Is that your uh, assessment of what he said? No, not at all, Carly. Uh, 
he was saying, and th- th- what I took away from it before you read those headlines, that he would likely use executive orders to close the border and drill, drill, drill back here in America again. And, and of course, the easiest bet you could make is seeing on other networks this morning having a complete and total meltdown over that comment when they know exactly what he meant. It was a joke. Yeah. It, it was a joke. He was talking about yeah. policy, and now the media is making and, something out of nothing. And as Carly gave me the look, Joe, you literally took the words right out of my mouth because yeah, I said exactly the same thing at the end the <laughs> He's just joking. Come on, liberal snowflakes. Listen, if somebody was planning to commit a murder, and you found evidence that they were tracking their victim, they had written multiple journals about how they intend to kill this person, and then you found receipts of recently purchased weapons, and in that same journal they said they were going to use said weapons to kill that person, and then when you confronted them about this, if their response was, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to commit the murder, Teehee, even though they said it in a joking term, I still think that you have reason to believe that it's not just a joke because of the evidence for the thing that they're planning to do. Now, the spin here from Fox News is especially rich because they screeched for a long time calling Obama a dictator every single time he signed a fucking executive order, not to mention when Obama was speaking to other world leaders and said, I could win a third term if I were able to run, but I am not because it's important that we respect the rule of law. What do they call him? A dictator. So if the shoe were on the other foot, if Joe Biden or any Democrat were saying, I'm going to go after the media, Fox News, for example, I'm going to imprison my political opponents, they would be horrified and rightfully so. In fact, Gigi Sohn was not approved as the FCC nominee because they thought that she would use her power to go after Fox News and strip them of their broadcast licensing. So when somebody is actually saying they're going to do this for them to not take it seriously. It's just coping to me because look, he, Trump will go after them, right? Trump is going to go after them too if they don't toe the line. But here's some more from Fox News because they're saying the same thing all across the network. So for one day, he's going to be a dictator. It's incredible. Whatever. But it's incredible what he does. This is a guy that knows how to manipulate and, and control media. This is why the other candidates have found it tough right. to get any any type of right. air. He gives you the headline, which is, I am going to be a dictator on day one. Then after that, he goes, this is what I'm really going to do. And he looks right. at Sean, and Sean is like, hold up, hold up. That's not what you're really saying, right? He goes, I, I, yeah, look at him. He's going right. crazy right now. He's going crazy. But that's his way of controlling the media and then saying what he really wants to say. Well, but to... I completely agree with all that. He he knows exactly what he's doing. He's making a joke. But nonetheless, he said, I'm going to be a dictator for one day. And so, you know, the, the political left now has their hair on fire. Donald Trump admitted to Sean Hannity he's going to be a dictator because he wants to I don't think close the border the, and drill, drill, drill. And that's not the definition of a dictator. Yeah, that's, just, no, he, that's a leader he's, who's he's trying joking. to protect our country. Actually, if you think about it, he's really a genius because he knows how to control the media and he gives you the headlines. And sure. I'll grant that to him. He does know how to generate headlines, but not all headlines are positive. And there's this saying that any publicity is good publicity, but I don't think that that's applicable to politics. I mean, if Biden, for example, was on stage and he shit his pants, I can guarantee you that that would generate a lot of headlines, but not necessarily the headlines that he'd want to see. And they defend Trump. But again, the irony is that he has made it clear multiple times that he's disillusioned with Fox News because the entire network did not go along with his 2020 election lies. He much prefers OAN and Newsmax now. So they could theoretically be the target of his administration if he chooses to come after them and follows through on this promise to go after people in the media. What's that? Sean Hannity did a segment where they aired some grievances of Trump. Well, we're coming after you. So... They are actually worried, but they're trying to play it off like they're not. But in conclusion, Trump says that he wants to be a dictator. And when he says that, I think that we shouldn't just dismiss it as a joke, especially given the evidence that we have that he wants to be a fucking dictator. Saying it with a joking tone all of a sudden doesn't make it any less true because the actions are what speak louder than words. And I didn't need the confirmation from him, but the fact that he won't unequivocally shoot down the idea that he'll abuse power should tell you everything you need to know. It's perhaps the first time that Trump is actually being honest about his intent, and we ignore him at our own peril. 
do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.